So today we will be talking about learning how to dominate the market in 2024. Before we actually get started, uh, just want to reinforce the risk disclaimer. Basically, all the information that is provided today by Trade Out Loud is for educational purpose only and should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. I'm pretty sure everybody knows by now that, and if you have been trading for a while, that trading involves a really high level of risk. And of course, it's not suitable for all traders or investors because you could lose money. So before deciding to trade, actually before even opening a brokerage account, you should carefully consider your personal objectives, your level of experience, and your risk appetite. Obviously, your risk tolerance. Individual performance depends upon each person's skills, time, commitment, and effort. Results may not be typical, and individual results will vary depending on how you manage the trade. You must definitely do your own research and, of course, take your own trading decisions and make your own trading decisions. All right, so let's get started, everybody. I see a lot of new faces today, and I just want to introduce myself. My name is Anka Metcalf. I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and invest in the market, in any market and in any market environment. I have been a professional independent trader for over 25 years. I am focused on day trading in the morning session, just the power hour for income purposes, and I swing trade and invest into the market. I've been doing this for over 30 to 35 years. I have been uh, with the, and I have been in the banking industry for over 10 years before deciding to committing to full-time trading. I'm running uh, two very successful programs uh, with Trade Out Loud. Actually, the first one that we're gonna, actually going to talk a little bit about today because it's geared towards wealth. It is geared towards swing trading and towards investing and making, creating wealth. Uh, and I have been running this program since 2010, since the inception of Trade Out Loud. Yes, we have been around for 13 years and January is our um, birthday and we're going definitely on 14 years strong. And the recent, the most recent edition, if I could say recent, is the futures trading room that has been created, uh, had been created in 2017. We do offer trading education for swing trading, day trading, and for investing. And we're actually going to spruce things up. And we are going to have a brand new, fully, fully um, revamped a swing trading course, and we're also going to separate the investments from the swing trading course, and we're going to um, have a state-of-the-art investing course that takes everybody from A to Z, and that is coming in the first quarter of 2024. I specialize in velocity trades. When it comes to day trading and even when it comes to swing trading, I want my money fast, and I want lots of it. So I have created a system that allows me to identify these key spots in the market. I'm going to be sharing with you today some of the elements that I look for when selecting my, uh, my stocks and my investments, my swing trades. For those of you that want to follow me you could, um, on social media, uh, on Twitter, you can find me uh, on Trade Out Loud, and basically the handle is Trade Out Loud throughout social media, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn. All right, so here's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about 2023 in the rearview mirror, and actually, you're going to be receiving an email at the end of this week with highlights from 2023 that I'm working on right now. I just got to the month of June and I still have about six months to cover just to give you an over, uh, um, uh, let's say an overview look at what happened and what drove the market uh, higher into 2023. What were the characteristics, the footprints that I followed to actually accelerate my account to create more wealth and to um for 2023 
I'm also going to talk about how you can get started uh, making your making your money work for you. Because remember, the best time to start investing in the market was back in 2009. Today is the first day where you should start investing into the market. We're also going to talk about best trade setups for explosive gains. I have a lot of charts uh, that I have prepared for you guys and some live commentary about what we can expect in 2024 and some uh, forecast levels for 2024 for the market. We're also going to focus on time frames for best results. If you want to have your money working for you, if you want to literally spend as less as five, 10 minutes in the market every single day. And if you want to go on the investing route, you can analyze everything in less than 10 minutes per month uh, using a very easy system. I'm also going to share with you the trade selection criteria. So if you want to do your own scanning, if you want to do your own homework, I can share with you some of the biggest components that I use in order to make my trading decisions. And it's not sophisticated. You just need to learn the system. I'm also going to be sharing how to spot me mega opportunities, even in the worst market environments, because let's face it, we have some stall into the market. Um, and as you guys, I'm on social media as well. And I see some of the accounts that are literally focusing on generating income through their post, calling the top of the market in October. Well, let me tell you something. They were heavily short, or at least they were saying they are seeing shorting into the market. Uh, and that is the inflection point where we actually hit the nail on the head and started to really bulk up our portfolio and position long uh, for the year. And there are a lot of things that, and in fact, one of the things that um, we have discussed today in my futures trading room that is going that definitely if you know these things uh, that are happening um, on a, uh, a it, let's say into a cycle into the market, uh, these are the things that are going to impact your day, day trading activity as well, as well, whether you're day trading stocks or futures or what have you. Now, let me ask you something. Do you guys think that there is more to life than this, than working in a cubicle? Type of one in here. How many of you guys, uh, how many of you guys think that this is actually a life? How many of you guys think that they can retire wealthy by working nine to five? Really? By working nine to five? <laughs> what are the odds? None. And I will have a presentation in January and I will share with you why we are not taught in school investing, why we're not taught how uh, to progress and how to make our money work for you. Okay. All right. I see some people in here that are uh, that are not um, having uh, sound. All right. Okay, cool. All right. So definitely there is so much more than working in a cubicle. Let me tell you something. Before I started to literally trade it, I think pretty much everybody, you know, that is going to come and come off, uh, coming off college, that is coming off university, you have to build some experience. So basically we all start here. Okay. I know I did. I started in here. And I was in banking, I was working in the banking system. And yes, this is where I worked. And then I evolved. And of course, I had my own office and all that. And But still, even if you have your own office, your income is still limited. And it's limited to the grade, to the pay grade, right? So in January, I will have a presentation. And I'm sharing, and I will be sharing with you guys what you need to do to actually get out of that pay grade. OK, so it's going to be really fun. That's coming up next. So, all right, let me just. Uh, oops. All right. So basically, uh, we're going to talk about self-directed trading. Right. So what is self-directed trading? Self-directed directed trading is the trading uh, is basically us trading our own accounts. 
It's basically investing, doing our own investments and taking our own investment decisions. Just a quick question before we actually continue. Do you guys know what the uh, percentage return is for hedge funds at the year end for your hard earned money? Needless to say that you need to have really a lot of money in order to uh, be with a hedge fund, in order to have your money managed by a hedge fund. All right, you guys got it. It's between six and eight percent. So, what if I told you that in one stock alone we made over like twenty three percent in about a month? Would that surprise you? I think not. So, it's totally worth it. It's totally worth investing in our trading education and investing in our knowledge because basically this is the one thing that we need to invest in, right? Um. I'm going to ask you, uh, um, before we continue, one last question, okay? So what do you think is the biggest expense that we have? The biggest expense. Just type it in here. Your thoughts are very important because that's how we learn. What is the biggest expense? Okay, our computer. What is our biggest, your biggest expense, like from your whole year, from your yearly income, what is your... Okay, taxes, Michael, you got it right. The biggest expense, and actually this is the second biggest expense. Actually, this is the second biggest expense. Do you guys know what the biggest expense is? Not knowing how to trade and not making our money work for us, doubling our money, okay? All right, so taking control of our financial future, managing our own money, because nobody can do it better. We're just an account number. And remember, with these big, big box firms, right, big, these big Citadel, whatever, you need to have at least one to three or $5 million in order to have your money. So there's this myth out there that you cannot start swing trading or investing unless you have a lot of money. How many of you guys have heard like, oh my gosh, you got to have a lot of money in order to start trading or in order to start investing, right? And I love the answers, Alonzo. Yes, ignorance, Douglas, losses. You got it. You guys, you guys are all right. Okay, you guys are all right. So what we need to be doing in order to have our money work for us is actually start from scratch, right? We basically need to just start to just do it. So what is swing trading? Swing trading is holding a position and we're gonna get a lot deeper into this today. Swing trading is basically holding a position from a couple of days to a couple of weeks or even a couple of months until we safely trail out of the trade. Just because we are in a trade and if the market is not having any kind of move, within that period of time, that's not a reason enough to exit the trade. As long as the stop is not being violated and as long as the price action is going back and forth, back and forth, we need to hang on to the trade. One of the biggest mistakes investors and traders make, and especially retail uh, traders and investors that they make is pull their money out. They get bored in a position and they say, no, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna take my money out and I'm gonna do this and that. And the next thing you know, the price of the stock is or the index or the fund is going to skyrocket in the next couple of days. <laughs> OK, that is the worst thing. So when you have your money working for you, it needs to uh, marinate into that account. This is creating so swing trading is creating cash flow uh, income. Income is actually generating wealth. So I do. I have my own ecosystem or all set up where I have my day trading to generate the income. I have my swing trading to generate still more cash flow, but money that I don't need, for example, on a month to month basis. And then whatever I have left over, what I do is I transfer to my investing account and I compound on positions or initiate new positions. Okay. So remember money acts as a magnet and the, uh, the more you start loving money, the more money is going to come to you. Now, in order to start swing trading or in order to start investing, I'm here like to break all the myths down. You don't need to be a math whiz. You don't. And the reality is that you don't need to be a math whiz. 
You don't need to have a finance degree. And we're often told that you need to be like a CPA or a CMT or whatever in order to start investing your money without losing your money. They love to instill fear into us so they could have and they could actually manage the money for us. Now, here's the thing. You do not need to know a lot of fundamentals, right? Uh, the only fundamentals that I focus on, especially when swing trading, is when is when um, there's a company that is reporting earnings. So, for example, if I if if Apple is reporting tomorrow, and if I want to swing trade, meaning I want to hold that position for a week or maybe a month, maybe two weeks until it reaches my targets, what do I do? Do I take it? No, because Earnings is going to have a really earnings or uh, earnings season is always the surprise season, right? How about if I'm investing? If I'm investing, if I want to invest in Apple, I just invested. Yes, I can invest a day before it reports earnings because I'm looking at the bigger horizon. I'm looking three months, 10 months, 12 months. Uh, maybe I'm looking for three years span, right? Depending on the market, uh, market context and the market environment. Because I don't care what the fundamentals are, because I know it's Apple. I know that it really it has a track record, you know, beating the market and having really good fundamentals and good structure. I want to invest in a company, for example, like Tilray. <laughs> okay, this is not my uh, uh, this is not my thing. I typically invest in companies if I want to invest. I invest in companies that I love. So, for example, Warren Buffett loves Coca Cola. I don't drink Coca-Cola. So for that reason, I'm never going to be a Coca-Cola investor. However, I do like to shop at Costco. I do love their products and it's super close to my house. And every time I go there, the parking lot is the zoo. So I know that Costco is doing great. So Costco is the uh, what, number one company into my portfolio. You've got to invest in what makes sense for you. You love Pepsi, invest in Pepsi. You love to shop at Target, go shop, go just invest, get a couple of shares in uh, in Target. So <clears throat> trading, swing trading and investing is actually relatively easy once we debunk all the myths around it. So let me tell you something really interesting. Every year, stocks will move above about 20 to 30%, maybe more each year. Oh, but, but wait a minute, why are those returns <laughs> um, that hedge funds are reporting the 6 to 8%, why, why are they 6 to 8%? Uh, because the fees and the commissions make up for the 30%. So they're actually making, let's say, let's say, I don't know, 20% and they're giving you 10%. Okay. And this, is, and this happens at least a couple of times per year in cycles. So remember 20 to 30%, you have big stocks that are moving 20 to 30% each year. And sometimes a couple of times per year in cycles because the stock moves up. And then it pulls back. I don't short the pullbacks, not unless I'm day trading. And then the stock just turns around and continues higher if it's into an uptrend. It's like a cycle. All right. Let me share you some charts. This is a chart of Apple and I do have some live charts that you guys are going to love. Okay. This is a chart of Apple. Okay. This is January of 2023. This is uh, January of 2023 all the way to July of 2023. You see this cycle right here? Look at the strong power trend. For those of you that are asking, what are these spaghettis on my lines, or spaghetti lines on my charts? The blue is the 20 simple moving average. The green is the 50 simple moving average. And the red is the 200 simple moving average. These three moving averages is all you need in order to swing trade. And as you can see, this 20 simple moving average is cradling the price and it's holding it. It's sort of like a trend line, right? Do you guys see it? It's sort of like a trend line. And it's so important to, to know that every single time the price action pulls back, it tends to pull back to this magnet and then extend higher. 
pulls back to the 20, extends higher. Pull back to the 20, extends higher. So if you know how to read these inflection points on the technical chart and they're not rocket science, 20 SMA, pull back to the 20 SMA, price rotation, and bang, you have it. Again, to the upside. We had so many trading opportunities here. We had a pullback in March. We had one in April. We have one later. We had one later in April. We had another one uh, end of April. Then we had a May breakout. We had another opportunity with a pullback in May. So this was a gold mine for swing trading. But I wanted to share with you something really interesting. Apple went up close to 60% from January all the way to July, 2023. And then it started to move around, bam, bam, okay? So take a look at the percentages for now, and then we're gonna come back on the technical charts and we're gonna review some more, uh, some more stocks. Take a look at Apple weekly chart approaching the one, two, three buy, right? This was back, by the way, in November, and I'm gonna show you some updated charts so you can see, I used these charts when I had a presentation in November, and I wanted to put it side by side how the results, uh, basically the results up into December, right? So you can see here the one, two, three pullback. Now, remember that it's very common to have about three bar pullbacks, especially on the weekly. And uh, when you get a three bar pullback, two to three bar pullback, especially on the weekly, the buy cycle steps in. All right, do you guys wanna verify this? One, two, three, buy cycle stepped in and it remains sideways until the next rotation happened. But this rotation happened because of the one, two, three and rotation. Here's one, two, up. Here's one, two, three, sideways breakout. Here's one, two, to the 20 SMA price rotation. Look, one, two, three, four, five consecutive weeks to the upside. This is a gold mine. So once you know how to identify these opportunities in the market, you can unleash, you can actually, these are the keys to your financial freedom, okay? Now, textbook retrace, uh, retracement onto the queues. Now, take a look. This is a chart of the queues right here. So we had the breakout. We have the pullback. And by the way, this is a monthly chart. And then here we have the perfect rotation off of the 61.8 FIB. So super strong. This is the golden means. The price action rotated back into the highs. And now look at this. And we went really strong in our um, swing trading program with, uh, uh, with uh, the Qs and the Spice, with Russell and with the Dow. All right. Now, who else has a similar pattern? Q's monthly chart, right? Q's monthly chart. You can see it right here. R pull back, rotation. It's sort of like a cup and handle information. It already it already completed that cup and handle formation. But what is the downside of identifying head and shoulders, cup and handle, a bull flag? Is that it's uh, everything is fine when you learn about these patterns. And in fact, these patterns work really, really well. However, they take a lot of time to uh, basically fulfill. They take a lot of time to form. I have discovered some inside formations within these patterns that give me an accuracy close to 90% of nailing the early entry within these formations. Now, this is still the cues. Look at the cues. We had a big blast to the upside. We had the pullback and we're noting that, guess what? If we get this rotation, which already happened, we're going to get approximately another 10% up. Wouldn't you like to have another 10% of your account? Of course, who doesn't? And I want everybody in here to think of money as a different way, right? So I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you guys in here absolutely love money? There's no shame in that. There's no shame in, tell me, do you guys love money? I mean, hey, Joe, sign me up. I have both hands up in the air. Like, I don't care. I love money. And you should love money too. Because the more you love money, the more you protect your money. It's also called capital preservation. You are not going to hit the market on really crappy setups 
or when you should not be hitting the market. Okay, so you have to love money. Money is energy. So money managers and hedge funds live mostly off commissions and fees. You are an account number to them. So if you still have money with somebody else that pretends to be managing your money, it's time to pull your money out. Now, whether the stock or the funds perform or not, they get paid. That's right. They get paid. So it doesn't really matter. And you get, I mean, they literally get paid an arm and a leg. So basically it's around $12,000 a year uh, for a very small, for, for a company, for example, like uh, ADP, I believe, to manage your, uh, to manage your uh, 401k. That's right. Wouldn't you have a better use of that money? <laughs> Think about this. What if you bought Costco stock, $12,000 worth of Costco stock? Wouldn't you be like, would you be situated in, in a much better uh, position than giving them the money? All right. A lot of people don't know that. So here's the thing. Barclay Hedge reported that over the past five years, the average hedge fund in its universe produced an, a, a, a net analyzed gain of 7.2% with a sharp ratio of 0 0.86 <laughs> and market correlation of 0 0.90. That's really bad. Exactly, Michael, you got it. And Costco pays dividend, right? Now, new reports find almost 80% of active fund managers are falling behind major indices. This is very sad. So where's, I mean, literally, what are they trading? Is it that retail traders now are becoming more educated than funds? This may be it, okay? Now here's Costco, and we're gonna review Costco as well, um, you know, live charts, but here's Costco. January through November, 2023, up, and this is a monthly chart, went up 26%. Now it's even more, so over 30. We're gonna take a look at it. Um, it is about to explode. These are the projected levels that I have, like $600. You can see it right here. $611 was one of my targets. And then there was another target here uh, that was into the $700 plus, $738. Okay. Here's Amazon, guys. Do you guys like buying from Amazon? Like it's so convenient, right? You pay a membership fee. You get to... Um, use their Amazon, uh, pr the Prime Music, you get Prime uh, Video, you get Prime Movies, you get all that stuff, one day free shipping. So it's so convenient, right? You pay, the, you pay that membership and then you get tons of advantages. And it's so convenient, like the, they have like membership, like if you want to buy, I don't know, toilet paper, it comes at your door every single month or whatever. So Amazon is a really good company, even, and again, in order to buy and in order to invest in something or to trade something, even if you don't really love, let's say the ownership, for example, who cares? It's just about what's bringing you money. So this is like literally went over 70% from January to September. Imagine if you would just have captured half of it or a quarter of it. Now, swing trading is the easiest trading style to make money. Why do you think that I'm saying is the easiest style to make money? First of all, you doesn't require anybody to sit in front of their computer. No, it doesn't. You could either opt for your own scanning in which you could do it probably once a week you can have a trading universe that simplifies it so you don't have to look through 6,000 stocks every single week. You can have a pool of 50 stocks. You can make money by having a trading universe of 10 stocks or 20 stocks. Just decide on which companies you like to trade, whether it's Tesla or Apple or Amazon or Google or uh, Micron and have, have them in a list, watch them. Because when you watch fewer stocks, your chances of succeeding are so much higher because you're focused. You become like the money 
manager, the money maker. You become the money maker of Apple. You become the money maker of Google. You become the money maker of AMD. The, re the second reason why trading, uh, uh, swing trading is easier than day trading is because not only that, it allows you to spend very little time in front of a computer, but your stops and your risk is has so many more chances of holding than in day trading. In day trading, you're actually going to compete with or trade with algorithms. Swing trading and investing are not as is they're not algorithmic focused. They actually have traders on on the trading desks, right? There are traders um that are specialized in analyzing, making the profile of the stock or uh, the fund or the ETF or what have you. But in day trading, there, there are not a lot of institutional traders that still day trade. Maybe there are 1% or 2%, but 87% of the market volume of the day trading market volume is actually our algorithmic trading. So it leaves very little for uh, human trading. So that's why, you know, day trading is a lot harder than swing trading. Plus swing trading, the last thing that I love about swing trading is that you're focusing on higher time frames. So it, they're, bring, they're automatically giving you a little bit broader horizon and you're able to assess the behavior of the stock within the next couple of days based on a couple of days to a couple of weeks based on the setup. And again, you do not need to know math, fundamentals, but the reality is that you need to respect the rules of the game. Because unlike investing, where you don't have a technical stop, when you're swing trading, you need to have a technical stop. So swing trading is actually that core, and it's actually that element that is in between day trading, which is in and out within a few minutes, and investing, which it requires you to keep that position in your account for a relatively long period of time, for months and years, right? So you need to know and respect the rules of the game, how much you're risking, and th this is actually the most important thing, how much do I have online for swing trading? What is my R? And you need to be patient and wait for the proper setup. It's not about the trade as much, but it's about the risk and the management. Why the risk? The risk is the difference between your entry and your stop. And based on those two parameters, you will decide how many shares you will buy the uh, stock with or the ETF with or the fund with. And management is also a very crucial role because you need to know what kind of behavior you're going to have or the price is going to have when it reaches target one. And what do you plan on doing when your target hits target one? What are you going to do if it hits target two? Are you going to take all the profit at target one and bail out? What if it has you know technically more room to the upside? What would have happened if, for example, when I traded, because um, I was I was swing trading uh, Costco, I have it in my investment portfolio, but I was also swing trading Costco because it, it provided us with so many trading opportunities. It provided us with beautiful entries, like gorgeous entries. And of course, you want to swing trade it. So you swing, 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 and then you leave some for investing. What would have happened if for example, I would have taken my profits at $500. Let's say I got in at $450. Let's say I had a target at $500. Now it's trading like over $600. What would I have done? I would have left more than $100 on the table. So that's one of the most important things why you need to have a strong management plan. So why is it important to get started? Why is it important to get started with trading? What is important to start swing trading? Why is it important to start investing? Because the money that is sitting in our bank account loses value every single day due to inflation. 
And even if we don't have high inflation, it's just sitting in our bank, it's not producing anything. So you're not going to get rich working in a cubicle all your life without having to invest because you're basically uh, trading at the bottom of the value ladder. You're working on the implementation, right? So you're basically working for someone else. Even if you're a manager, you're working for someone else and you have your money that is not working for you, you're just living to pay bills. That's it. Okay. So this is a trade that I've done back in October. Just wanted to show you the returns. This is the power of swing trading. This happens to be a futures trade. I mimic the same trade into uh into my swing trader uh, swing trader program. I did not take it as uh as a GLD, okay, as as the ETF. So I did uh, GC and futures. This was our entry. This is our signature rotation. You can see the volume is popping up here and continue higher. We had a target of, of 2000. Um, and on October 6th, basically, we initiated the trade. We actually, I think we closed it towards the end of the month, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this stock alone generated $60,000. This stock was only four contracts. 8.13%. This is what I wanted to show you. Like this is for my portfolio. This is for my account. These stats are for my account. This is my entry and this is my exit, right? I had a targeted 2000, but I managed it. So my exit is 1995. So I managed to get over 8%. If I, And this is like one trade. I just wanted to show you the power. I'm not showing this to impress you. I'm showing this to show you that you can do this. And to empower you to start somewhere. Now, who is swing trading for? Okay, so we talked about investing. Investing is when you have a little bit of money, you don't have time at all to manage your funds. Even if you have $10 or $50, you can start investing. So I'm here to debunk the myth saying that, oh, you need to have at least a million dollars to start investing. No, you can start today. Open a Webull account, $50, go there, buy Costco. That's it. Easy peasy. That's all there is. The next month, because that's the secret to investing that we're going to have a webinar next uh, uh, next month, is compounding. Compounding is the eighth wonder of the universe. So next month, you get another 50 bucks. You saved on your Starbucks lattes and you get another 60 bucks at the end of the month. Throw it in there. Now you have a hundred bucks working for you, okay? And like Michael said here, $50 dividend, $15 dividend. So now we're going to talk a little bit about swing trading. So swing trading is still creating cash flow. But remember, at times with swing trading, you cannot empty your account at the end of the month and say, you know what? I'm taking my profits. I'm going to start from zero again, like I do with my day trading. Because in my day trading, like I have my account at the end of the month, I pull all my profits out, pay my bills, do whatever. And then what I have, I compound into my positions, into my, my investing account, which I don't touch. And then I put into some, uh, some new swing trades. And that's how you make money, make your money working for you. Having this ecosystem from day trading to swing trading, for uh to investing so i became like my own little powerhouse here at home i didn't even have to leave the house so i created my own uh wealth ecosystem in my house i'm like my own little goldman Sa goldman sachs i'm like oh my own little credit swiss right here right at home so who is swing trading for if you don't have time you have a busy schedule you go like oh my god i don't have time i don't have time to trade to scan to do this but I can swing trade because what it is, you can set up your limit order to buy and you, you just move along, right? You decide on the specific setup that you want to take. You put a buy limit order and then you're gone. You decide where your risk is. Of course, you know how much, um, you know, how many stocks you're going to get. So swing trading is for traders with really busy lifestyles that want to manage their own long term money or trading accounts. Part-time traders that do not want to sit in front of the computers all day, because basically it's part-time trading with full-time results. 
Remember, you can still achieve the same results as for income, maybe more. Swing trading uh, is a wealth generation style of trading, just like investing. Because there is the swing trading that focuses on charts, for example, on daily charts. Some of them are focusing on the weekly charts. Some of them are focusing on monthly charts and triggers, right? And investing focuses more on monthly charts, focuses more on quarterly charts and so on. So all you need in order to start swing trading is... 50, uh, 10 minutes a day, literally 10 minutes a day, maybe less. Like, for example, if you're a swing trader and if you're trading this week and next week, like zero time, <laughs> like zero, just move along, you know, enjoy the holidays. And that's the beauty of it because the money's working for you. If you want to work from home or if you have a full-time job and say, man, I really need to get out of this job sometime in the near future, it's time to start working for it. And you can do that. You can do that through trading. There is no other job on the planet that can offer you a skill set where you can have unlimited potential according to your level of experience and the skills that you have. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to tell you the easy steps by which you can start swing trading or investing. Number one, is open an account. You're going to open an account with Schwab, TradeStation, Interactive Brokers, Webull, Robinhood, Fidelity. I have a lot of friends that, you know, like literally that have, that know, and do not know anything about trading. And they're with, we, with Webull or Robinhood, like literally. And they're making money. Why? Because they're looking at the bigger picture. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, and they're uh, buying what works into the market, what resonates with them. Step number two is determine your risk and your risk tolerance. Now, what is your risk? Think about this. If I, for example, love Costco so much, but I want to swing trade it and I literally buy 50% of it, right? What would that do? If I'm swing trading and if I say I buy 50% of my account is going to be Costco, but my entry is here and my stop is here, what happens if the trade turns around? I blow up 50% of my account. What happens if I invest in Costco? I don't have a stop loss. When you invest in a stock, there are totally different criteria than swing trading. It's all based on risk tolerance. It's not based on the risk level as for swing trading because swing trading is a little bit more aggressive. But when you're swing trading, 2 to 3% is what it's all about because you, you're you still going to respect your stops if the, uh, for example, trade uh, turns it, uh, against you, you're going to be out. You're just going to stay with the trades that work into your favor. So how do you establish a game plan? First of all, you cannot do anything without having a blueprint. You need to look at the bigger picture and say, okay, I need to have a system for my entry, my stop, my risk, because if I know what the entry and the stop is, I know what my risk is. And I know that if it reaches target one, I'm going to do this. If it reaches target two, I'm going to do this. Okay. Now, if you want to do options, there's another criteria that you need to, uh, that you need to account for. And that is the time, right? Because other than that, your options are going to expire worthless. And the last step to creating your uh, swing system is to create your trading universe. When I first started trading, I had a trading universe because when you first start trading, you need to keep it super narrow, super narrow, have a super narrow list because the smaller the list, the bigger the focus. So I literally started with a list of 20 stocks when I was day trading and swing trading. And I would only look at those particular 20 stocks. That's it. Once I got a little bit better at it, and it after a year, I narrowed my, um, I widened my trading universe to 50 stocks. So I didn't go full blast into 100. I didn't go full blast into scanning the whole market like I do right now. I go literally for all, all, through about 6,000 stocks every single week. 
The last thing that you need to do is create a strategy. And this is step five, create a strategy. First of all, uh, from my personal point of view, the best thing to do is to, and I'm going to ask you guys, trade with the trend or against the trend? What do you guys think is easier to trade with the trend or to trade against the trend? With the trend, exactly. The trend is your friend. Why is the trend your friend? Because that is the institutional power push. That is where the money is. So if Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and um, I don't know, uh, uh, let's say Morgan Stanley decide to go law Costco and they're buying and accumulating Costco, I go like, no, I'm going to start shorting it, okay? Or they buy the spies or they buy the cues or whatever they do. And you're seeing that because there's an increased volume. You know, the little lines at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to share it with you in a while, in a little bit. So trading with the trend is always going to be your friend. Don't try to short something unless you have a real good technical reason that is represented on the technical chart. It has to be a formation that shows you that funds are starting to distribute. Other than that, you just stay in, okay? Or buy any kind of pullback. Now, there are some things that makes sense in swing trading, in counter trends. For example, you guys see, I think it was, um, what stock to report last week that gap down huge? FedEx, right? FedEx report last week. And it boom, down. It did a similar pattern last year. It went bam, down. And we waited, we waited, we waited. Yeah, you can take it for a short squeeze up. Of course you can, but that is for very short term, okay? And why do we do that? Because traders, it, it, it went down like 30 bucks, I believe. It, it, it gapped down like 30 bucks. So you can imagine that there are so many people that are trapped in there, so many traders that are feeling the pain. They go like, I cannot stand this anymore. I'm getting out, Right? What if it goes another 30 points, $30 down? I'm going to freak out. I'm selling. So the reason, so they're selling based on panic and the price starts to go up. And the more the price goes up, the more panic it is. And people are going, I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell. Because they'd, they're instead of, instead of getting out with $30 loss, per, right? Um, they're going like, I'm going to take 25, I'm going to take 27. So that creates the flurry to the upside. And that's why buyers are stepping in to take advantage of that little short squeeze. Okay. And again, you know, decide a strategy and say, Hey, what are the stocks that are going to be trading? What are the stocks? Okay. Are they going to be into my trading universe or not? Or what have you? So basically swing trading, I was telling you guys earlier, swing trading is a sweet spot between day trading and position trading, right? It's right in the middle. It's not as aggressive as day trading where you're fighting literally with algorithms because you gotta be really good at day trading to make it uh, into the market and to start making money into the market. But in swing trading gives you so much wiggle room. It generates high probability trades and it offers the best chance of success. So if you think that, you know what, I don't have the time to dedicate to day trading to create my income, but I have a full-time job. And uh, what I could do is swing trade. So swing trading positions will be held from two days to a couple of weeks. And it focuses on higher time frames like daily charts and weekly charts. And these are the charts, your zip codes, where you're going to be living. And it's all based on technical analysis. Swing trading, here's another myth. Swing trading is about uh, nailing the bottom and nailing the, you, you buy it at right at the very bottom and you sell it right at the very high, at the very top. Not true. Swing trading is about capturing the core of the move right here. You can never nail the bottom or you can never, never nail the top. Sometimes we nail the bottom. I got to tell we have a strategy and I have a knack for, and I teach my traders how to really buy this bottom cheap. Okay. 
All right. And of course, here at the first sign of rotation, we're out. <laughs> hey, Joe. Yeah, we do. We do. All right. And it's going to come with uh, to you with experience to all of you guys in here. It's not hard. You, it's not hard. And in my personal opinion, trading is that skill that once you learn, it's that high income paying skill. Okay. It, nothing is literally coming remote close to trading. And if uh, the, oh, my only regret is for not starting earlier. <laughs> to go to my job and not starting earlier. So the key is to know <clears throat> how to enter upswings or um, ups, upswings or down <laughs> and identifying that sweet spot, sweet spot, banking the profits before the market turns around. So the elements of the trade, and I keep on repeating these, so I know that, you know, because repetition is key. So I know you're going to hear me a lot, entry stop targets and share sizing. These are the most important elements. So for example here, okay, so we have a pullback and we have the rotation. This is my entry. This is my entry candle right here. This is my stop <clears throat> and this is my out. Uh, you can see that I'm exiting as the price rotates back down and continues down. This is a system that it's going to take you in and out. It's called, uh, uh, this is called a, a candle trailing. And once you are up big and once you see like a surge of volume and the size of the candle is getting wider and you're seeing these uh, uh, like unusual wicks into the candles, I typically kind of like freak out and abandon ship. But this trade alone here generated multiple R's. Look at this. This is the entry. This is the stop. How many times did it multiply? Once, twice, three times, four times, five times, about six times. Six times. So this was about a six R trade for me. So basically, if I risk $100 on this trade, my return was $600. There's a different way of staying in the trade. OK, in swing trading and in swing trading, that is a, a little bit longer term swing trading. It's called active investing. Actually, it's not investing. It's active investing where you actually live through pullbacks. So let's say you got in here, entry stop, you position size and see how many shares you're going to get. You go up. It pulls back. Suck it in. You're going to stay. And this is what my mentor used to say. Just suck it in and stay in. At the first sign of rotation, you raise your stop just below this low. And every single time you have a newly formed pivot, that is where your um, that is where your uh, stop is going to be raised to. There's a downside to it. And in choppy remarks, so for example, if you get in here, right, you get out, you get out here, there's another buy, you can get back in, get back out, get back in, out, in, out. So there are a lot of ways in which you could get in and out. However, if you keep that pivot trailing, for example, into long, let's say for, uh, for um, let's say longer moves, right? You're going to see like, for example, here, right? This would be your in again. And instead of being out, you see the next pivot form, you're raising your stop here and you would be out. Okay, so my system would take profit here versus here. Okay, so that is, and again, it all depends on the market. So for example, I did a lot of pivot trailing when I was trading 2009 through 2017. And then in 2018, I started to trail tighter because the market of volatility and the structure changed. How many of you guys would know how to select winning stocks and how to, uh, how to how to have that winning and really performing hot list? Your trading universe. So it takes a really proven strategy to select high odd trade, swing trades in stocks and ETFs to invest in, right? Or to swing trade in. The stock needs to be fundamentally sound for long, medium, and long term. Okay, so it has to be fundamentally sound fundamentals in line with technicals. And again, remember what I said, you don't need to, to know fundamentals, okay? There's, there's a catch to this, just hang on. You gotta buy stocks on sale. Now, how many of you guys like to go to Best Buy, for example, and buy a new OLED, L, uh, LG, OLED, whatever, 
flat screen, right? And once it comes out, it's like $3,000 or five or 10 or whatever the size. But after a year or after six months or around a holiday, they go, they go on sale, right? They go on sale. So if you have your heart set on that flat screen, that was $3,000 and it pops on the market for $19.99, right? You go like, oh my God, I'm going to go get it. The same logic you need to apply to the stocks. Okay. Same logic applies to the stocks. Oh my God, Costco. I, I don't know why I keep on talking about that. Oh my God, Costco was at $600. Now it's 500. It's on sale. So buy stocks that are on sale. Now, 2023 was a fabulous year for stock trading. Now ask yourself this. If you haven't had winners in Apple or Microsoft or uh, AMD or Micron or any other of these stocks that have had a really good blast in 2023, who cares? Who cares if you didn't make money in 2023? 2024 is around a corner. And what you need to be doing right now is say, man, I wish I was in that Apple stock all year long. You know what? Now's your time. Put it on your hot list. Look for every single buy and rotation that is happening on the 20 SMA. Look for the pullback. If it's a little bit, you know, steeper pullback to the 50 SMA. Start from there. Start from something that is super simple. Start from a strategy that is super, super simple. So when to buy? When certain events happen in the market, okay? These events create the pullback. The pullbacks make the share prices go lower to a level that becomes appealing to the buyer. Did you guys see the market? How crazy it is? I think it's so super highly manipulated. So here's the thing. Let's say tomorrow we have earnings from Google. So Google is like ripping higher right now, going strong into the close. And guess what? The next, you know, let's say at the end of the day, let's say now it's 5 p.m. And the stock is going to report earnings and the earnings are bad. They miss whatever they do. Anyways, like I said, we don't need to know fundamentals. All we need to see is the chart and the chart gaps down. What if it gaps down on support? Wait and see, because the surprise is that you may find buyers at that level. And there may be some algo, some day trading algos that see a buying opportunity there. So they're going to initiate some buying. There are going to be traders that are, there, there are going to be some day traders that are stocking and they're seeing that the price is gapping down into support. But what happens if the stock is into a dominant uptrend and it's trading on support? Buy with both hands, okay? So there are other events that are happening like the dot-com bubble, 2008 financial crisis, 2016 election, 2020 uh, pandemic wars. Plus we had the 2022 bottom in October, which was phenomenal for the market. That is the That was the launch pad, right? But you don't have to wait as long. These are like critical lows to actually... Push the pedal to the metal for your investments, not necessarily for, sw for swing trading. You are going to find swing trading opportunities every single day if you scan, literally. So do I need to get, do I need these events to get in? Yes and no. So it depends on your time horizon. Of course, if you're in the investment field, these are, these are the opportunities that you look for. I actually set myself buy limit orders when the price action is into the highs. And I said buy limit orders if the price is going to get into that desired location, for example, at the 618 FIB, I want to buy some there early on. So I don't wait for a setup into my investing account and I compound. Focus on companies that have thrived and survived over the years, you know, established into the market. I don't like to invest in IPOs, but look for companies that have thrived and survived during turmoils, like the pandemic, like the 2008. Be diversified, stay away from high risk industries. I literally stay away from airlines, hotels, biotech, not unless I sometimes swing trade hotels and airlines, not biotech, pharma, biotech, no. I do have some shares long-term in LA Lily, 
And that's because everybody wants to go on a diet and, I, and they're going to come up with a brand new drug next year, similar to Ozempic, right? So here's a meta stock. Uh, here, I'm sorry, here's a Google stock. One, two, three, four, pull back to the 20 simple moving average. Rotation, thank you very much. That's my entry, that's my stop. This is going to show me the difference between my entry and my stop is going to show me how many shares I'm, I'm going to buy the stock with, right? And I'm going to buy it here, right? Textbook, four candle pullback to the 20 SMA. Rotation, uptrend. Look at the uptrend, so strong, good fundamentals, great business model. Do you guys think that uh, Alphabet, that Google is going to be around? Some, you know, it's going to be around a few more years from now. Heck yeah. All right. So be in sync with the institutional footprints. I'm not telling you to follow the footprints, follow the cycles. We don't follow the footprints because we don't want to be here. We want to walk beside them. We don't want to walk behind them. We're not going to chase institutional moves. You want to be in sync with them. Think institutions. Think the same way they do. They use the same patterns we do. You cannot reinvent strategies. It, and I laugh so hard, literally brings tears to my eyes. And I laugh so hard. I get these emails like, oh my God, I discovered this strategy and is doing this and that. I discovered the strategy. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like institutions are not rediscovering strategies and they're using the same strategies since the 1920s. And then you guys that have been trading for like a year or three months are discovering new strategies. It's like, I laugh so hard. Here's Amazon, huge, 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 huge. This is 2018, 2019 base. Look at the breakout. Look at the stage three, right? Stage one is the sniper stage. You're entering stage three accumulation. You're entering a stage three, which is indecision, not knowing whether it's going to break out or break down. You're entering a distribution stage. And earlier I was telling you guys and saying, uh-oh, on support. <laughs> what do we do? What do we do on support? So if you are an investor and if you're seeing the top right here and you go like, man, I wish I had some shares of Amazon. I wish I had some shares in Amazon. Just put some buy limit orders from this high all the way to this low, okay? From this high all the way to this low. And then guess what? Let it work for you. Because if it comes down to this level of support and if you get filled, you got a really good, fantastic entry. And it's under 100 bucks, like literally. All right, let me tell you the types of stocks that we have. We have growth stocks, usually in new or fast growing industries and have the potential to give shareholders greater returns. However, uh, they're the most volatile class of stocks and may be just as likely to go down in price. So remember, there are growth stocks. Value stocks, I love value stocks. These those, uh, value stocks, those of companies with growth potential that are currently selling at a low price relative to their intrinsic value. It can take time for their true value to be reflected by the price. Then you have income stocks, generally not expected to appreciate greatly in share price, but typically pay steady dividends. I mean, who doesn't like dividends? Guys, you're not gonna retire off dividends. Dividends is a bonus that a company is going to pay you for your loyalty of having their shares. Like Costco. We're going back to Costco. All right. IBM. I don't know. There are so many companies that are out there that are paying really good dividend. Here's a company that I own. Doesn't pay me dividend, but I still love it. And that is Amazon. Amazon doesn't pay any kind of dividend, right? And there are blue chip stocks. These are awesome, right? Blue chip stocks, stocks of large, well-known companies with good reputations and strong records of profit growth. They're considered safe investments as they generally generate dividends as well. And of course, penny stocks, inexpensive but risky speculative stocks issued by companies with short or erratic performance history. 
Uh, they're a low price nets, a small loss in exchange for the potential of explosive growth. Did you guys know what I did in 2008? And I think a lot of you guys that know me, you guys know because I've been talking about this for a long time. In 2008, when everybody was like, oh my God, financial crisis, the market is crashing. Yes, 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 fun, fun, fun. But I looked at some opportunities in the market. At that point in time, there was no other alternative to a satellite radio, right? And there was only Sirius satellite. There was nothing else. And guess what I did? Do you think like GM or Mercedes or what what have you uh, would have said, yeah, 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 we're, we're cutting. We're just going back to FM stations or AM stations. We're not going to be using Sirius satellite. Sirius satellite came down to about eight cents a share. I wish I had more money. <laughs> that is when I made my bulk cash buying these penny stocks and modus crisis so i actually i didn't nail the very bottom at eight cents or whatever it was in the series satellite but i bought it when it was like at 10 cents and then i bought some more when it was at 18 cents and then i added more in, into the 20 cents and then i sold it and it was like six dollars and change i made a lot of money what was the downside when I made such an investment in a penny stock? What was the downside of losing my initial investment? So when I entered the trade, which was trading at 10 cents, I positioned size for zero, zero. So my risk was 10 cents per share. You got it? <laughs> okay. So when it comes to trading, no one has a crystal ball. It's just hard work, 99% technical and 1% fundamental because you need to still know when those companies are reporting. Okay, here's Alphabet with the breakout. All right, let me share with you my training criteria, my strategy, my selection criteria. First of all, you got to have good history of earnings, three years minimum you look back you can find this data on yahoo finance on finviz and ever everywhere at least three prior quarters of earnings beat expectations uh enter trades after they post earnings results not before right don't don't sit in trades you know for surprise because you're gonna stop out a lot Buy companies that have a really good, that have really good earnings and sales. Look for companies that make a splash. They have new products, new services. The one company that comes to my mind, what is that? Apple, right? Uh, technical charts. Remember, 90% of trading is technical. 90%, right? 90% technical. Trade with the trend. Look at volume. Look at volume spikes, ranges. Look for companies that are trading into all-time highs, FIB locations. These are elements that are going to help you kind of like assess and where the price is trading at the moment when you are scanning. Look for volatility contraction, right? Because how do you deter? And, and this is like nicely said, oh, look for volatility contraction. You go like, what the heck is she meaning? All right, simply put, look for small body candles on the technical chart. So that is when the volatility is subsiding. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that simple? Type of one in the chat box. Like, look for volatility contraction, everybody. It's like, no, look at the freaking chart and see where the candles are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because the biggest moves come from the smallest candles. That is a volatility contraction, okay? Easy peasy. I'm telling you, trading is simple if you literally... Try to explain what they mean. Basically, translate what they did, what these institutions, you know, are trying to say. And positioning within sectors or indices, right? Um, and you have to pick leaders and ladder laggards, relative strength and relative weakness. For example, yeah, you can short if you're a swing trader. You can short the market, but typically look for leaders and laggards and do your own leaderboard. Because you want to get in long leaders and you want to short laggards if they're going, uh, if they're going, of course, according to the trend. And look also for institutional participation because institutional participation accounts for 85% of the market volume. So if you're seeing a, a rise in volume at the bottom of your chart, that means that institutions are lagging in. 
Also, block trades, dark pools, et cetera. We're not going to get into those, okay? Here's some more charts. Apple coming in to the 200 simple moving average, rotating and making its way towards new highs. Now, how to enter a trade? Like we learned about a criteria. We know that we need to have a leaderboard, strength, weakness, so on and so forth. But how do we enter? So first of all, entry point is the potential of uh, an early point within the potential leading stocks consolidation or reversal form correctional pattern. So what does that mean? Hold back to a key level of support. Okay, to a level of support, whether into a prior high, if it's in an uptrend, whether into a moving average, or it can find its way, or into a FIB, right, into a FIB retracement, uh, let's say into a 23.6 or 61.8 or what have you. And it needs to form a pocket, that pocket, that rotation, that buy setup. So it needs to confirm that the price is turning the other way. So for example, if you see red, 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 and when you see green that is popping up, that is rotating, is shifting from red to green, okay? So trade out loud is going, and basically our strategy is to look for dominant trends. And we like to buy support in dominant trends on any single pullback. Look at this, double bottom and Microsoft, beautiful into the 200 simple moving average where the latter bottom is slightly higher than the prior, which confirms that the price action on any rotation is ready to take out new highs, okay? You want to invest, take a look at Microsoft right here. Any kind of pullback is a buy opportunity. Uh, this is a swing trade, for example. The price pulls back to the 20 SMA consolidation. Again, low for a small bar. See, high volatility bar, low volatility bar right here. Okay, look for that contraction. That is what it's all about. Okay, number one mistake in trading. A lot of traders are focused on saying, oh my gosh, you know, I just want the stock picks. I just want, just just tell me one or two stocks that you're watching and uh, I'm going to get in, okay? And if, if you're just focused on that and not learning the whole entire system, uh, you may lose money in the end because you may not have the complete system. You may not know how to manage it properly. You may not know how to, a place of proper entry. You may not know how, you know, to follow price for maximum gains. The biggest components uh, component is understanding the trade. And that's why in the trading room, what I do with my day traders and what I do in my swing program is show traders in my videos that I share with my swing traders uh, and investors it's show them on the technical chart, this is how, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at the price to get over this high. We want to place our stop under this low. The targets will be calculated based on this and that. So traders gain confidence on the technical, on the technicality of the trade and not on the fact that, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a stock that we love, it's Micron and um, we love it. So we're going to go long. So basically, if you learn how it's done, this skill is going to last you a lifetime. You don't have to rely 100% on a service or, you know, going on TikTok to find trading and investing ideas, right? The most important thing is a recession-proof skill. And it's a skill that if you invest in, it's your biggest investment. It's literally your biggest investment, okay? And you can trade from anywhere in the world, okay? Now, I'm going to share you 10 ways to generate income in trading, in swing trading, Number one, you're going to let the chart do the talking and guide you through every single trade. And you have to be very patient because sometimes traders go like, oh, I didn't have any kind of patience and I just jumped in. And they become unsecure of their trade and they jump out. The moment they jump out of that trade, the trade turns around again and it flies. It starts flying and they go like, oh, my gosh, I didn't wait. I didn't do this. And I lost money. They shouldn't have lost money on that. So let the chart do the talking and respect the technical. Zoom out to the technical picture so you can understand everything that's going on. Um, patience to wait, right, for the pattern so you can assess that risk, the entry, the stop, etc. cetera. Uh, select the proper time frame for each style. Remember that each style of trading comes with different uh, different time frames, different different windows. For example, in your, if you're day trading, you're trading the one to five or 15 minute charts. 
If you're a swing trading, you could actually take positions on the one hour all the way to the daily charts. If you're active investing, you could do weekly charts and monthly charts. And if you are investing, you could do uh, monthly charts and quarterly charts. Keep it super simple when you're in a trade and don't overthink it because the thinking has nothing to do with trading. And the your first glance at the uh, on the technical chart is going to reflect the true uh, feeling and what your brain knows about that specific pattern. So for example, if you show me a chart right now and if I look at it, I go like yay or nay, okay? And I could say yes or no because my brain recognizes a good pattern from a bad pattern because trading and investing is about photographic memory. It's not about math. It's not about fundamentals. It's not about anything else. It's about photographic memory. And if you come with bad trading habits, your brain is wired for those bad trading habits. And that's why it's so hard to break outside of that cycle. So you need to learn how to trade the right way. Okay. You need to learn the true setups on how to and how to respect them. Because the next time when I you and you see the pattern, you're gonna get into that trade. When I first started day trading and swing trading, well, I've been swing trading for quite some time, but especially for day trading. And this is God is helping you for any style of trading, even for investing, it helps you a lot. I would have like different charts. I had a set of probably 30 charts, and I'm not kidding you. I had a set about 30 charts printed out on paper. And that was a buy, that was a sell, that was a breakout, that was a breakdown. I had a multiple strategies. And what I did is I printed those charts and I literally uh, wallpapered my wall with those charts and I had them. They were literally glued to my wall. And when I would see, because I my mentor told me that I need to develop this photographic memory, otherwise, you know, it's gonna be really hard uh, to identify traits. And he actually gave me the clue and say, hey, you got to print some charts out of some strategies that you're going to apply and put them on the wall. So next time when you're having a pattern in your computer, you just look up the wall and say, hey, does it match with anything that I have? And if it does, I take the trade. And if it doesn't, it's it just don't take it. Okay. And all of a sudden I found that one of the, do you guys want to know? Do you guys want me to share with you? what my number one trading strategy was at the beginning of my career. One of the easiest pattern to recognize. Okay. All right. It was breakouts. It was breakouts and breakdowns. So if you know how to assess a trend, right? If you know how to assess a trend, an uptrend or a downtrend, and if you see a base, Oh my God, you know, you buy it above the base, you put your stop below the base, let it go. It was the simplest strategy. I would scan for those faces. In fact, I used trade ideas since day one. I was their number seven user in the company. <laughs> Funny. Yes, I was. So as soon as they came on the market, I've been using trade ideas and I had it customized. I had to work really hard because you have to customize it. Now it's really evolved and it gives you all those things that you're looking for. But back then I had to customize mine and I ha you can still customize yours right now according to volume, according to whatever you want. But the, the idea behind it is that basically that's your trading plan, right? Because you want a company that trades at least 1.5 million shares on a day-to-day -day basis. So high volume, high volume stock. I want a stock that I have a pattern that I can literally identify super easy, right? So yeah, so let the chart do the talking for you. Keep it super simple, don't overthink. It's so easy when you have it on the wall. Trust me, it's photographic memory. And here's my game plan. This is my personal game plan. I zoom out to the technical image where I can see the pattern. So for example, if I'm a swing trader and if I don't see the pattern on daily chart and it's just blah, 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 I don't recognize anything, I go to the weekly. And if I recognize the pattern on the weekly, then I establish the parameters based on the weekly. But if I don't see any kind of pattern on the weekly, I just move on to the next. I only focus on trends. I don't focus on, you know, things that have been basing or things that are chaotic in the market and have been like, like for example, cannabis stocks. 
that literally are just garbage right now. Maybe they're going to be on fire next week. Typically, these uh, cannabis stocks do really well around earnings. Or, uh, I'm sorry, around election <laughs> earnings, okay? And uh, one other thing that I wanted to share with you is that next year is election year. Typically very bullish as we're heading into the summer, okay? The other thing is uh, establish the parameters, have precise trailing for everything, right? So always have an exit plan. And all I always scale into targets and then I can add them back on. So establish the kind of environment that you're trading, whether it is high risk or low risk. Seasonality plays a very important role because I knew from what I have learned in the market is that seasonally wise, the S&P, NASDAQ, Russell tends to outperform the market into the last quarter. So what did I do? Go along Spice, go along IWM, go along the Qs, go along Russell, right? That's what I did. And I also look for seasonal stocks, stocks that have potential to run. Um, <clears throat> use limit orders. I never get in at market, not unless like, oh my God, I forgot to put in an order. I'm buying it here, okay? Um, never get out of a good trade just because, you know, you're, let's say, bored, okay? I always use um, limit orders, yeah? And I always, always stay in the trade as long as I can until I see a reversal, a, a reversal pattern. And I always go with my leaderboard, relative strength, relative weakness, right? I don't want to go long a weak stock because if I want to go long a weak stock, it may not have the power to push through. Because when you're analyzing the market, the stock market, the stock market is different than the futures market in the sense that you have to analyze, let's say, the market internals, the Q's despite, which we're going to be doing live in a few minutes. And based on that environment, you're going to go through the sectors within each index and you're going to try to det uh, determine which sector is the strongest sector within that parameter and which stocks are the strongest within that stronger sector. And that's how you pick winning stocks. That's how you pick the relative strength stocks to go long. And you'll look for pullbacks on those. And of course, you have to have the multi-time frame alignment. So meaning that I'm not going to go along something. I'm not going to go along, for example, PayPal, if the weekly chart tells me that it's going to be selling soon. All right, here are some rules. Trace stocks that have relative high volume, high volume compared to the prior days, two to seven. So if you see like volume is increasing, it's increasing, it's increasing, it's, it's, it's going like sloping up, then there's an accumulation pattern into it. Stocks that have patterns of beating that has the tendency to beat earnings, look for fundamentally strong, solid stocks like Apple underestimates and always over delivers always ideally to trade stocks that are trading above the 20 and above the 50 simple moving average and that produce rotations and buy pockets at those areas look for zones of confluence right so zones of confluence is when you're having overlapping key formations right key technical levels so when I trade a stock, I need to have it at least over 1 million shares per day. I'm not trading stocks that have that are trading 10,000 shares or 100,000 or even 500,000. Keep in mind, oftentimes when you get a hard sell off, you're going to have these shifts, right? So it's going to red, 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 red and shift to the green. And you're getting like one of those really sharp pivots. They have, again, the tendency of failing because they go straight up and then they can blast again through the bottom. Instead, look for rounded bottoms because it takes a little bit longer time to develop like sustainability. 
okay? Now, I'm gonna conclude with this and then we're gonna jump into charts and show you how 2023 panned out and what we see for 2024, okay? So the biggest thing is to start trading now because the biggest enemy to your account is the delay, is the delay, oh, I'm gonna to start tomorrow, I'm gonna to start in 2024, I'm gonna start in February, I'm gonna start in December. Think about if you have started investing $50 a month, January of 2023, and compounding and com buying, like buying, because we just talked about Costco a lot, just buying Costco and Costco and Costco. January of 2023, right? You would have more money right now. Who doesn't like money, right? So the biggest enemy is delay. Learn to create wealth through swing trading and investing. This is literally like the no hands-on approach to trading. You could have a full-time job. You can do whatever you want. <clears throat> Learn the art of charting because once you learn how to chart, how the system works, you have the keys to the kingdom. That's where the secret is into charting. It's chart art. It's an art. Learn investing to multiply your money over and over and over again. Again, you don't have to start with a big account. You can start with 10 bucks, guys, on Weeble. Understand the bow and arrow law. Do you guys know what the bow and arrow law is? Do you guys know the bow and arrow? What do you, what do you first do on the bow and arrow? You put your arrow, and what do you do first? You pull, right? You pull. Let me give you another example. When you want to jump, you want your account to go all the way to the moon, right? What do you do first? And if you want to jump, you're on a trampoline right now. You want to jump like your, yeah, like your stock. You want to jump like the Qs. You want to jump like Microsoft. You want to go, what do you do first? You go down and then spring up, right? So this is the bow and arrow law. You pull back and then move forward because... Everything in life obeys this bow and arrow law, which is basically you take a step back or three steps back before you push forward. You always invest in yourself, you invest in time. When you invest, what do you do? You pay for something, for a service that is going to teach you how to push forward. So basically you start with, I don't know, let's say you start with $10,000, you invest in yourself $5,000, but then it's that go down and then boom, back up and avoid the biggest expenses. Avoid the biggest expenses. And like I said, one of the second biggest expense is the taxes. And the second biggest expense is not investing in yourself so you learn how to generate money, okay? So now we're gonna go to charts. All right, this is a chart of the SPY. This is a weekly chart of the SPY. We could actually go to a monthly chart right here, but I think weekly chart makes a little bit more sense of, than you can see. So you, this is basically, right, the chart of the SPY. Now, I want to, before we actually go into time frames and we go into the move and we go into the performance of 2023, let's take a look at the volume here, okay? Take a look at the volume. Volume spike, volume constant, volume, volume increasing, okay? Volume increasing. Take a look here. Volume, this is November 20th right? Increasing, 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 right? You can see the volume increasing here. All right, that's a sign. Accumulation. Accumulation. Early start to window dressing, okay? This vertical line represents the barrier, the separation from 2022 activity to 2023 activity. From 2023 till now, Okay, it's actually more because this chart has to be like at the bottom here. Okay, we have over 25% in 
in, a, in returns, 25% return in the spies. This is how much the spies went up in 12 months. 20, almost 25%. 25%, guys. So if you had $1,000, now I have 25% more. Right? 25% more. It's more. It's more. Okay? More is more. Green is green. All right. So now you see that basically in July, we had the meltdown, right? We had the pullback, but where did this pullback come into? Look at these highs that we have here. Oops, I don't know what happened. I'm gonna just get new tracing level here. Okay. We pull back to a technical level of prior lows. I actually had a buy limit order at this 50 SMA, right here at this 50 SMA. I had a buy limit order. So I got in before the rotation even happened, the end of October. And here it is. So if I was to take my returns just from that ad, I that's a 13% move. From October mid-October to now, mid-October to now, 13% move, okay? Now, this chart basically shows us that we're into the prior highs here, okay? We're into the prior highs. You guys see it, we're into the prior highs. So what's next for the market? This is the trajectory that we had in 2023. Uptrend, continuation of a massive uptrend. You guys can see it right here. Massive continuation of the uptrend. Look at the accumulation, by the way, here. Look at the volume dump and look at the rotation. Look at all the panic here, right into the 200 SMA rotation and came back up. So this is a massive uptrend that we have here. How many of you guys would like to know what is the next target for the spies for 2024 and beyond? Just type a one in here. And then I'm going to show you something super magical. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a monthly chart. Okay. Because I want long-term projections. Okay. We want long-term projections. We want 2024 and beyond. Okay. There are two ways in which we can do it. First of all, we want to focus on the higher, on investing, right? On the investing level. So what we're going to be doing is trying to find out what are the next targets, okay? What if I told you, let me try, try something else here. Okay, I have everything. Okay, good. All right. So I'm going to share with you the fact that in 2024, we're going to see, and mark my words, because I always do these types of events into the year, uh, year end. I always bring back charts. Always. And I'm going to share with you what I shared with my traders back in 2008. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, all right. So here we go. The next target that we're going to have is going to be 500 in the spies. Then we're going to go 550. Then we're going to go 600 and then we're going to go something crazy like 700. So this is to 2024 and beyond. 2024 and beyond. These are the target. This is totally achievable into an election year to go into the 550. Totally achievable. Totally achievable into election. 550. Mark my words. Obviously, again, it's not going to go uh, straight up without any kind of pullbacks. This is on the investing side. Now, let me share something with you guys. We're going to choose a shorter time horizon for a next projection. Okay, for a next projection to, all right, let me just pin this right. Okay, for a next projection, for a closer projection, 490. And then we're going to jump from 500 from the bigger projection. And then we're going to go to 540. All right, you can write these down. Uh, you're also going to have access to this recording. And this recording is going to be uh, for two days online. 
48 hours and then it's going to be poof gone. All right. So mark my words. We're not going to delete it, but we're going to show you clips mid-year and into the end of the year to see how the market worked out. Okay. Now, how many of you guys would like to see something like super spectacular type of one and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know this could be like this. This could be like this. All right, here we go. Do you guys remember the dot-com bubble? I'm pretty sure you are aware of this chart. So we have the high here. We have the low here. This is the dot-com dot -com bubble high. This is the retracement. And then we went straight up into 20, uh, 20, uh, 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 2007. What did we do in 2007? We basically revisited the uh, 2000 top. So we basically revisited the prior highs, right? That's what we did. We revisited the prior highs. And then when we pulled back, let me show you exactly what we did. Double highs and basically double lows. Am I correct? Is this a base? <gasps> it's a base. It's one of my favorite strategies on the whole planet. Remember, I started focusing on this type of trades because I love them, okay? So remember, what do you do into support? You look for rotational pockets and you buy. Because let's not forget that the market was still into an uptrend, right? We have historical data here is 9092 or 9093 and the market was up and it pulled back, right? And this was actually a 618 FIB. So it pulled back into the golden means, a straight up retracement back into the FIB. Let me share you something really cool. Now, this is where I bought, remember I shared it with you guys that I bought Sirius Satellite when it was like really at the bottom. I could share the chart with you in a little bit. But basically we have double top and double bottom. I started buying here because it was a double bottom. A lot of the investments, I had a lot of friends that I was talking with around here that were panicking and they were selling out. So their accounts went under. I bought from them and I carried my positions higher. Okay. I carry, I still have positions from 2016, a big part of my portfolio because I sold some and then I added some, but I added, this was the big ad point for me. And then it was in 2020, big ad point. And last year in October was a big ad point. So basically we have two highs, two lows. So if I go and trace some projections here, let me see if, cause I wanna, okay, make sure that I, okay, pretty good. All right, do you guys see it? Do you guys see something here that is really worth noticing? So once we, the price went above these highs, it went straight into the 1618 projection and then it based but when it based, look, I don't know if you guys can see it here. I can I can try to zoom in. All right. Take a look. It came back here to this fib, launched. It came back to the fib, launched. It came back to the fib, back to the fib, launched. And look at the coil here that we started to have the volatility in 2018. We were dancing around back and forth and launch, this was the pandemic. If it, we didn't have the pandemic, we would actually be higher in the market right now. So in 2000, what, what is very interesting that I wanted to share with you guys is that in 2008, at the end of 2008, I had a webinar. I was doing like a lot of free stuff because I, I didn't have trade out loud. So I was doing a lot of pro bono work. And I had a lot of friends. I was doing like lunch and learns. Like, I don't know. I was dedicating my time because people were panicking. So I told them like, I'm buying here. I'm buying here. And I shared with them my projections. And I kept on sharing my projections in 2009 and 2010 and 12 and 2000. And I was telling everybody in 2000, I said, guys, we still have room for the upside. We're going to go, we're going to go into this 375, 400. And there was a trader that said, oh my gosh, not in my lifetime. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like, I don't know. Okay. So this is the power of an educated projection into the market and it pays to know how you're gonna do it. Now, let's take a look at the cues. 
I'm going to give you some projections on the queues. But first off, let's look at the weekly. You can see the weekly. We have all-time highs into queues already. We have a nice expansion already from the high to low. So basically, if we take some projections and trace them already here, you can see that we're already topping out into a target zone. So we're nearing a target zone into the 416, 415 to 416. And then if we consult, so from this point on, it's possible to retrace back to about 400 or even a little bit steeper into this minor support zone. However, if we break above this level, look at the sharp run to the upside. It is possible to go very near term into the first quarter, potentially to the 462, right? Into the 462. These are uh, targets beyond that uh, 2.618. Right, this is the 4.236. And here is the next projection into the market. And now if you're looking at a macro projection and say, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna buy $25 worth of Qs or $50 worth of Qs. This is what I'm gonna be doing, all right? This is what I'm expecting, okay? So you're expecting profit targets of, you can see it right here, 450, 500. And there's a bigger projection all the way to 600 to 650. All right, so these are the bigger projections. The market works magic. The market works like this. Now imagine if you compound and you buy, because that is the eighth wonder. That is the most beautiful part. And especially if you are investing, because we talked about Costco, I got to bring Costco up because we have been uh, trading Costco, right? I'm an investor in Costco, I'm a trader in Costco. Look at this beautiful chart, guys. Look at this beautiful chart. Now look at the extensions and the potential that this chart has almost to go into the $1,000 mark. Now, why do you think it's slowing down a little bit here? Because it's into a target zone, okay? It's into a target zone. Now, we have been on and off in Costco and this is our portfolio, okay? And this is, uh, you're going to find this. If you go to our website, I'm going to show you exactly where to go. Okay. And this is what we, we release to the public. These are the positions that we currently have open. And these are just some positions. Look at uh, look at some of the positions. Costco long, long-term 570. And we keep on adding to this, right? We bought at 570. So the last time we added, okay, to it was at 581. Okay, and we closed this position for six hundred at six hundred sixty dollars, six hundred sixty dollars for over thirty percent gain, thirty percent, thirteen. I'm sorry, thirteen percent gain, and then, oops, sorry, here. Okay, and here we have it as a long term, which means don't touch, <laughs> which means don't touch because we're waiting for seventeen seven hundred and seven forty. Okay, 700 and 740. These are just some examples. Um, these are some of the stocks that were uh, that were still in, like Goldman Sachs. We were able to identify, look at where we got Goldman Sachs. We got it at $328. Okay, $328. Oops, sorry. Uh, let's put Goldman Sachs right here, and we're going to put it on the weekly. All right, $326 was right about here. Okay, right about here. You guys see it? It's in November and we had a very tight, this is one of the strategies that we teach as well, right? And we got it right here. Look at the move. Look at the move. It's gorgeous, right? And currently, I mean, we're still in over 18% in this one. Okay, Goldman Sachs, <clears throat> over 18%. The trade is not closed. Okay, so this is what we release on our website. And these are still the stocks that we are in. You guys can see the full list here. Okay, but this is the portfolio that our clients and our members have access to, which is pretty much the same thing. But the only other thing that you guys don't see because we don't do it publicly because it's free, right? Uh, this is for paying members. We tell them what to trail. We tell them what to trail. So for example, uh, if you're in... Uh, Cisco, we're telling you to add. If you're in PayPal, we're telling you to trail $60.80. Your entry was 57. You have already achieved two targets. If you're in the queues, we're telling you here that trail under today's low and today meaning 12.14 at the end of the day after the close. 
If you're in Cisco, you're going to add at 4850 and you're going to do this. Okay. Uh, we're putting charts. Um, and these are some of the trails, some of the things that we update. So you're not left hanging and saying, oh, oh my God, what do I do? Okay. So we're giving you the trade. We're explaining you the trade and then we're posting, okay, this is the trail, right? This is the trail side. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the trail side. Aside from this, you guys also have access to a position size calculator. So with a position size calculator, you're able to easily determine how, determine how many shares you can take the trade with. There's a calculator in here. You click on this and you have easy access to that, okay? Depending on your account size, depending on your um, risk tolerance, Oops, sorry about that. I just accidentally clicked on some clicked on something else. Okay. Uh, if you want to swing trade, you have funding. So let's say you don't have any money. You go like, man, I wish I had money to swing trade, but I can't. Um, I have my money in investing, or I don't have money at all. All right, we offer funding. It's on our page. Okay. Uh, we provide you some platform layouts if you're using Thinkorswim. We provide you guidelines. You got the PNL explained. You have option expirations, explain plus you have this. Okay, let's see if you guys see this. Yeah, you do. All right, we have a private X feed. You guys can see it right here. This is, and this is what, this is where you're getting all the updates real time. You got to pop up on your phone every single time you have some major development in the market. Okay, look, GLD, achieve target one today. Uh, Home Depot, still basing, CCL, new highs on day, Disney, three weeks of range. So we're expecting some kind of move. Apple is trading into July's highs and all that stuff. NTAP, these are trades that we're actively in. Fast, new high for the day. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to hear like, oh my God, your stock is blasting up again today, right? Uh, so for example, like you get all of these updates right into your feed, right into your feed, Okay. So if you guys are interesting, interested, I'm sorry, if you guys are interested in taking part of our stock swing charter program, the price is, it, the price is gonna go up uh, January 1st, just to let you guys know. So if you're interested in getting grandfathered in to the stock swing trader, which is now $199 a month, we also provide some investing ideas. We're gonna have a brand new, um, uh, service just for investing, uh, but we will continue to provide investing ideas for the Stock Swing Trader uh, members that are grandfathered in. We gave tons of ideas. For example, last year and two years ago, we had Airbnb, we had uh, McDonald's, uh, we had so many trading opportunities that literally the uh, Nvidia, Nvidia is the one investment that. By the way, NVIDIA alone this year, NVIDIA, here it is. Okay, uh, let's go to a monthly chart here. Okay, NVIDIA, we were day trading and swing trading. This was the latest ad, <coughs> excuse me, ad last year. And we actually started adding um, beginning of November of last year uh, as a long position. And this is core, so this means investing. Just want to show you real quick right here. All right. The potential all the way to here. Look at the percentage gain. 264%. 264. Imagine if you had, imagine if you had a thousand dollars worth of NVIDIA. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. All right. So if you guys want to, um, all right. If you guys want to, take part of this stock swing trader. We also have a course, but like I said, we're revamping the course. So if you want to learn how to trade, you could get on our wait list. We have about 15 traders that are already on the wait list for uh, Empower Wealth. Uh, and this is the service for self-directed traders, for busy individuals. Um, I do all the scanning. I do the trading along with you guys. It's basically a newsletter that you're going to receive each Monday with a video and all the data that you need to know for the uh, for the whole entire week. 
And uh, you have all the details here on our website. Uh, this is kind of like a snapshot of that uh, email that you're getting. You click here for the market video. And it's always on Monday because Monday is a little bit of a choppier day. It's after the weekend. And I find that if we do it on Sunday, a lot of times I would have to rescan on Monday because the trades would not, you know, especially after option expiration and all that stuff, the trade would uh, reassess dif different parameters. Uh, we get you access to the portfolio, which is this one right here. Oops, this one right here, not the website one, but this one right here uh, with all the trades and all the updates and all that stuff. And by the way, if you see 100% here, it's because the trade is still active. And once we put in the close price, it'll go to the percentage that we uh that we currently have so if you guys are interested you can hop on to the stock swing trader i'm going to copy the link for you guys into the room remember uh the price is going to go up with about a hundred dollars and it's going to take effect on january 1st um and i mean can you put a price on the massive returns that we had on and on the stock picks i mean it it is really time consuming for me to do all this work and I'm doing it on a weekend. Okay. Uh, because that is, you got to do the scanning. You got to do the prep work when the market is closed. And then we also have tons of other trade ideas that are released throughout the week. Uh, and you guys are going to have them um, on the performance portfolio that will be announced uh, on our private XP. So this is basically everything <clears throat> that you need to know about the program, the market analysis, the trade updates, uh, the time horizon that you have for uh, swing trading and for some um, investing I investing ideas. So here's the thing about investing. You can start investing anytime. Uh, however, I like to stop for some investing opportunities when we have some sharp pullbacks. And that is what I will announce into the program. I'm not just saying, oh, well, just buy Costco today. No, I'm waiting for a pullback. And then I'm releasing a new like buy the dip kind of thing. Uh, real time to portfolio access. Um, and, uh, if you want to join us again, we have just a few days left for $199 yearly is a $19.99. So basically this is the best, uh, deal because you're going to get two months for free. And, uh, yeah, this is pretty much it guys. I mean, I think the results speak for themselves, by the way, into the website. If you go to our website, which is uh let me see here if you go to the very bottom you can see here view swing trading performance and you're going to view the swing trading performance since 2012 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 so it's basically you know a lot of information in here that you guys have um then you can see the results by each uh by each month and uh basically take a look at this month right here so in this was june Remember the adage, sell in May and go away? Look at the returns that we had here. Look at the returns that we had here, 117%, okay? All right, so yeah, it is uh, It is one of the services that we have started Trade Out Loud with, and I have started Trade Out Loud with this swing, tra uh, swing trader service back in 2010. And um, I do put a lot of time and effort into it. And I love swing trading. And this is this is actually my preferred style of trading. I love day trading. I'm really darn good at day trading. Uh, but I love swing trading. So if I could do anything down the line where I don't have to sit in front of the computer, not even five minutes, it would be this one, swing trading. Okay. Uh, I do have some questions, so feel free to type all your questions. Uh, hey, Joe, I do email. No, the the trades are not emailed. The trades are going to pop up in your into your performance uh, portfolio instantly. So I type them in, and you you're going to have them right there. I send out a a uh, an X feed. I keep on saying Twitter. Uh, a, a tweet. I send you an X uh, a post. <laughs> should say. Uh, I send a post saying that new trades are being posted in the performance portfolio. You guys have them. Uh, most of the trades are released on Monday and Tuesday, some of them on Sunday as well. So you're going to be alerted on the X feed as well. Uh, if that is in Canada, you cannot get thinkers. You don't have to get thinkers. You could, you could use any charting, any broker. Yeah, you could use any charting system, any broker. <clears throat> till the end of the year because uh, it's going to be the the service is going to be 299 for the stock swing trader. Yeah, so it's 199 until December 31st. Yeah, it, it's I mean, 
If you have a full-time job, that is so easy to do. That is so easy to do. I monitor the market because I'm literally, I put a lot of alerts. It's not that I sit in front of the computer all day long, but um, I literally, you know, place a lot of alerts and I notify, you know, my traders and I also teach them what to do, what to do. So you need to post alerts for, you know, uh, when you want to take partial profits. Event you prefer, think or some. I do too. I do too. There are so many other churning softwares and brokers out there, but I prefer. Um, uh, by the way, Interactive Brokers is really good and has you know really great commissions and great things if you want to day trade as well. No, you don't. You don't have to. No, you. Uh, yeah. Uh, is the Master Swing Trader course required, or uh, will the futures trading course suffice? You basically, yeah, if you, uh, if, yeah, if you have attended the futures trading course, oh my God, you're like already a hundred steps away. <laughs> it's like, boom, you're like in the stratosphere already. Okay. You have an interactive brokers. You don't like the charts. I know. I know. Here's what I use. I use a lot. You, um, I use the uh, Transpider. I can notify you. If, if, look, what I could do for you guys is ask them if they have a, a special price for uh, for the holiday season. All right, for the uh, for the year end. And when I send out this, uh, when I send out the recording uh, for this uh, webinar, I can uh, I can post it to see if you get any additional discount aside from what they have. If you like this, I love their charting, by the way. <clears throat> I love the charting. And plus you get like, uh, I build already my scans and you can see here, like for example, for today, I could see what's leading and what's lagging. It's all about the leaderboard, like I said earlier. Okay. Uh, so for example, SMH was the big performer. You can see here that I'm using a lot of fibs, right? So it's heading into a uh, target level. So I could, it's like really easy to scan. This is XLE. This is, I don't know, X, XLU and so, uh, so on and so forth. Very easy to scan. Plus you get a lot of customizable. Uh, I, I even have developed uh, my breakout system, uh, my own scanner here. And <clears throat> for example, like I like to always, you know, kind of like do a percentage change from high to low. And I kind of scan this way. Okay. So I go through stuff like this and I look for patterns. This is, this is key. Okay. This is super key right here. Uh, John, how can we watch the presentation? I will be sending the presentation on. I don't know if I have time tonight, but for sure you will have it tomorrow. Uh, no worries about joining late. You will have access to the recording. Oh, you're a bit confused about how you can follow the trades. Okay, so we sent out an email every Monday night with a recording. Uh, basically, I'm analyzing the market context and what we can expect uh, for the market door for that week. I post the major economic releases, the most important earnings for the week, the context in the market, according to those specific elements that are happening, uh, the earnings and uh, the, we don't have any earnings now, but uh, it'll get hot back uh, when we go back in, uh, when, we, when we go uh, into January, it's going to get really intense into the first, uh, into the second week, I should say. Um, <clears throat> so you also have question about how much money you need to make the annual fee worth it. It depends on how much money, if you pay $2,000 a year, how much capital do I need to invest? I mean, here's the thing. If you think about this I mean, and you can look through the track performance. Okay. You could look, you could go on a, for example, on a monthly basis and to see how you're following. And if you love it, you could just switch to the annual at the end of your period. But you can see like, for example, you know, what kind of, I mean, there are some months that are going to be outstanding. There are going to be some months where uh, you're going to be a little bit below because these trades basically went into October. You're going to have some 5%, you're going to have then 38%, but overall you're going, you're going to come ahead. Uh, as far as how much capital you can start with any kind of uh, capital, just decide on the risk. So for example, typically the return of uh, the risk, the reward to risk that I'm looking at is three to one. 
So basically, if you invest $100, I'm looking to yield about $300. So you can make like you can make 2K in a trade, depending on how much money you, uh, you have. If you, I don't know, shoot me an email and um, tell me how much, um, um, how big your account is and how much money you have in your account and I'll give you a rough idea. If you're going to start with $500, yeah, it's possible for you to uh, triple that, okay? And it's still going to be worthwhile, okay? And remember, you don't have any commissions. So if you have, I don't know, a $10,000 account, it's easy. It's easy. Uh, we do have a lot of clients that have, um, you know, bigger accounts and they trade their, their IRA accounts and retirement accounts and long-term accounts. So uh, we have uh, a lot of clients with really big accounts as well if we go on the monthly, yes if you go on the monthly, you get grandfathered in yes nobody's going to change that for you all right if there are trades during the week how do we get notified on the x feed on the x feed so you're going to go here and i'm going to say there is a new trade in the performance portfolio not sure if i have it here to show you exactly how it looks like uh okay the market is going to be closed yeah so this is the place where i'm gonna you're gonna be notified and say yeah you are going to there's a new trade posted in the performance okay here it is okay i'm posting some new trail stops in our portfolio so that means that i'm raising my stops uh into the uh into the trades <clears throat> Okay, so here it is. I'm posting new trading ideas in the performance portfolio. For some reason, I cannot open X on my computer. So please check the performance portfolio for all trade ideas. And then you go to the performance and here are the details or any new trades. I, what I do typically with new trades, for example, this is, let's say today's, let's say Monday or Tuesday, and we have some new trades. I typically, you know, kind of color code them like that, you know, just to highlight that these are for the week. And then the next day, I may take that yellow off not to, you know, kind of like mess it up. Uh, John, there's no commission in day trading in day trading or swing trading or investing in stocks. When you're trading futures, you're having a commission. They're pay you're paying commission, but you don't get commissions when you're trading stocks. It's zero in, zero out. Yeah, it looks easy to read. You mean like the, the the feed? I was going like back and forth, Joe, and I was thinking like, I don't know, maybe Slack would be better. Maybe Discord would be better. But like, this is so clean and clear and, you know, so easy to read. I mean, I don't know. By the way, in Cisco, this is where we got in. You see this base here? This is where we got in. We got in here. At the price explosion, we stayed in, we kept our stop. Our stop was right below this low right here, the bottom of the base. And look at the nice return. Look at it. Look at it. It's just gorgeous. All right, guys. All right. So thanks so much for participating and showing interest in our, um, you know, in swing trading and investing and making your money work for you. Uh, I really appreciate your presence. I hope you guys had a great holiday and I'm really looking forward to uh, working further with you guys in 2024 and achieving your personal goals. And I'll see you guys uh, in the Stock Swing Trader soon. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great uh, rest of the holiday week because this is a short week. Okay, so thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you guys. Uh, and by the way, brand new trade ideas. Uh, we'll start. Uh, uh, we will start posting next year. So until next year, we're still writing a lot of positions that we have uh, that we have active. Okay, look at the December um, portfolio. It's full, 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 full. All right. So thanks everybody. Hope you all have a great uh, rest of the year, and I hope to work with you soon in 2024. So happy new year, everybody. And I'll see you in the new year with new profits. Thanks, everybody.